go into the T13 men's 400 meter final in advance. Oscar is coming up, as is David Weir, toward the end there, uh, th two of the last three events on the evening. This is the, the least visually impaired of the visually impaired classes, if that can possibly make sense. We ought to just uh, give people an idea of when Oscar's coming up because uh, people, loads of people watching in South Africa and they'll want to know the so they can get the kettle on. Uh, he's in the, the final, it's at 9.15 .9 UK time. Uh, I can't remember if South Africa's an hour or two hours ahead at the moment, but it's in about 15 minutes it'll be on. So if you want to, uh, if you need to go to the loo, if you need a cup of tea, do it now. A cup of Roy Bosch, uh, whatever you're going to have a drink, go and get that and he'll be on in the next 15 minutes. So let's have a look at the runners and riders in this next event. Who do you fancy in this one? In this one, I would look toward the... Uh, uh, wow. I, I, would, I would actually say Mohammed uh, Am Amugun. Mohammed Amgun. Yeah. Amgun. Thank you. I, that's how I'd say it, Amgun, I think, from uh, Morocco. From Morocco. Because he's got the, the best season, the best, what, 49.04, and the rest are all over 50. Right, and he actually has the Paralympic record, which he ran here, which means that he's running really fast here. So there he is. So there he is, Mohamed Amgun. I don't know why the Moroccan's wearing orange. It's, a, it's not a colour I would associate with Morocco. It's... I always feel like the Dutch have kind of patented that as their colour. It's hard to take it. Yeah, gre green I always associate with Morocco. Um, Jamil Nasser, Algerian record holder, 50.45 his qualifying time. Which reminds us that everybody in this event is a hero in their own country. Now they're thrown in to see if who can be the hero in the world. Yes, and often in these finals, and you'll, you'll see if you know, people coming last and second last, but they're still often the fastest runner in their country, if not their region, continent. Right, exactly. And there's the American Mark Heath Price, 22 years of age, making up the field in lane nine. So we're looking uh, at lane five, uh, Mohamed Amgoun of uh, Morocco, 23 to be the man to lead us through here, but to watch out for the Russian in lane six as well, Zverev. Silence descends over the Olympic Park in London for the men's 400 meters T13 final. All running lanes, and who's gonna be the first one to show in this? It's all pretty even on the inside lane, the Russian's going very well, Lab's in but making his way up through the field is uh, Zverev also of Russia and the Moroccan at the moment is quite a long way back. It's uh, Zverev of Russia in lane six and also Labzin of Russia on the inside lane doing very well and the Moroccan not showing at all at the moment. He looks pretty comfortable right now. I'd imagine he's gonna turn the jets on when he comes off of this turn right here. So at the moment it's uh, Russia one and two, Morocco third. And he does look very relaxed, and he's coming through now, but he's not going to catch Labzin, I don't think. Labzin of Russia in lane mm -hmm. two is in the lead. Zverev uh, is going to get the silver, and uh, the Moroccan is going to have to be content with bronze. Now, he looked very relaxed, the Moroccan, with his style there, but he just uh, it looked like... He almost looked as though he was running an 800 metres, and he, he was waiting for the second lap. He did, he did, though. You could see that he, was, he pulled his hamstring as he came, grabbed his hamstring as he came across the finish line, so... Maybe there was an injury worry that he was trying to stay well within, not stretch things too far. So but not to take anything, and not to take anything away from Labson, who is absolutely ecstatic, lying on the track here. Well, he'll have to get up because we've got Oscar Pistorius coming on shortly, so you'll need to get up the track. Congratulations, though, on your gold, fella. He's excited and <laughs> absolutely exhausted. <laughs> it looks like as well, though, though he's recovering quickly. And he applauds the crowd, or he's giving it big. Looks quite a character, the Russian. Just uh, telling us which country he's from. Thank you very much for clearing that up. He's Russian. And happy to be competing for his country. T There's nothing it. like putting on the colors of your country. You compete all over the world. And come to an event like this and put the colors of your country on. And it changes the perspective. You're, you're competing for your friends, your family, but also for a whole lot of people you don't even know. What was that like for you, Chris, the first time you pulled on 
the Stars and Stripes. What was it like, your uniform? Did it have the Stars and Stripes right somewhere? It did not at that point. No, the first one, first one that I had did, did not have any Stars and Stripes on it, but it still was the U.S. uniform, and that was... That was in, in the track. I definitely had had more stars and stripes, and mm. I think in skiing we d we didn't. And the first one that I wore was a skiing one, and mm. we didn't. But it did say USA on it. Very important. Yes, very much so. So you're watching coverage of the London 2012 Paralympics. The track and field action with me, Jeremy Nicholas, and Chris Waddell is uh, our American summarizer. How many, how many goals did you win? The five goals. Five goals. Just the five. Five goals. He's only yes. got five goals, so I think we can qualify him as an expert. <laughs> did, you win, you. did you win more medals at the winter or the summer? More at the winter. Yes, 12 in the winter and one in the summer. So there's a little bit of a disparity there.